Mr. Slaughter arrived three hours ago. He asked me to check on the cargo. Is it still okay? The word is barely. Well, you keep him alive, not just till we get to the hospital, but as long as possible thereafter. He's had a bullet embedded in the base of his spine since 10.30 last night. Uremic poisoning's already setting in. Well, I'll be with you from now on. What's he saying? Just a name, Anna. <laughs> I appreciate your problem, Mr. Slaughter, and the urgency which compels this visit. Nevertheless, I'm afraid I must decline to involve myself. Dr. Kramer, the blunt fact is you're already involved. Because you're the ranking expert in the field, because I'm here now, and so is he. I didn't invite you. Or him. I can assure you I don't make it a habit of barging in on Nobel Prize winners, but the point is there's very little time. There's only hours, probably. Mr. Slaughter, because we've enjoyed some success with animals, is no guarantee that it will work with humans. At best, such an undertaking is extremely hazardous. The human brain is more sophisticated, more complex, more fragile, if you will, than that of a chimpanzee, besides which, as we both well know, what you ask is against the law. This is an executive order pursuant to Title II, subparagraph 4, National Securities Act, that disposes of that little technicality. Immense light, Mr. Slaughter, is not a little technicality. I'm sorry. The risk is too immense. Without nearly sufficient precautions, preparations. Dr. Kramer, you have been making preparations for 15 years. You would be doing exactly what I asked long ago, were it not for that minor legal barrier. Don't you think I made a thorough check? All right, you're short of funds. You could use a big new research grant. How about, say, $50,000? I waited all this time. I can wait longer for less melodramatic circumstances. Well, that wasn't intended as a sealed bid. I could possibly do better. Oh, you will. Considerably better. It's a unique and, I must say, highly pleasurable experience not to have to beg. 250,000. <laughs> Does that include house calls? As I said, I can wait. Can you? I'll call Washington. As long as you reverse the charges. It's one of your people, isn't it? You don't know? Dr. Hillel Mondoro, parents deceased, A.B. Brandeis University, MS Columbia, got his Ph.D. right here under you. His wife also works for you, too, part-time lab secretary, former Karen Lehman, father living, cardiologist, attached to the Mount Sinai Hospital in Tel Aviv. I shall sleep better tonight knowing you people have documented such invaluable information. Don't be too sure of that, doctor. Washington meets your price. You're not going to be sleeping tonight. Hello? It kicked. Would you believe it? I just felt it kick. Come on. At two months, even embryonic geniuses don't kick. A belch, maybe. You're on a steady diet of pickles, blueberry blintzes, and celery tonic. How could you blame? So? I promised my father a kosher pregnancy. Did you also promise him the first kid in history born with a chronic case of heartburn? <laughs> coming out. Just about. That's when I feel so sorry for them. You do lack a certain clinical detachment. Nothing else, I'm glad to say. Listen, we'll be able to begin in about a minute. You better buzz Kramer. Okay. That sounds sacrilegious. Buzz God. Yes, Karen. I am holding, Dr. Secretary. Dr. Kramer says we can start any time now. Please inform Hillel he may commence without me. This Dr. Mondoro, is he, uh, is he a first-rate man? I'm eminently satisfied. Uh, if Washington goes along with this, you want him with you? Mm-hmm. He's already been cleared for loyalty. I suppose you know he's really loyal to you. I think he romanticizes the fact that I chose not to stay and work under Hitler, though my Aryan status was quite pure, of course. Oh, you can abide a romanticist, eh, Doctor? Mr. Slaughter, in the interests of my work, I can abide anyone. Even you. Yes, I'm still here. Yeah. I see. I'll tell him. Doctor, when you're holding a hand like yours, it isn't really poker, is it? May 12th, memory transfer test. The female chimpanzee, which was injected yesterday, May 11th, with RNA, the ribonucleic acids extracted from the brain of another female chimpanzee. 
The first chimpanzee, the donor of the RNA, had been conditioned to expect food only from Dr. Mondoro and was indifferent to me, Karen Mondoro. She would show happiness and excitement only when Dr. Mondoro's presence was felt and would push a button which resulted in food coming down through an opening to her. The chimpanzee that we're about to test, the recipient of the first chimp's RNA, has never been exposed to either Dr. Mondoro or myself or to any such training. She is indifferent to me, as was the donor. All right, let's change places. Dr. Mondoro is now as close to the animal as Karen Mondoro was. The animal's first reactions are exactly the same as those of the previous animals in these test series. She seems confused. shows excellent memory transfer. Her reactions to Dr. Mondora are exactly the same as those of the donor. It's a good job you don't have a craving for bananas. Between you and that chimp, we'd be broke in a week. Dr. Mondora, Mrs. Mondora, this is Mr. Slaughter. How do you do? How do you do? We are going to do a human transfer. Soon. Perhaps starting to take the donor's brain within the hour. Which means we better get going. Dr. Kramer says you too. Where? University Hospital. They've got the donor there. He just got the word. The man is sinking fast. Uh, Mrs. Mandora, when you go home tonight, did you see any strange men lurking about? They're on our side. Hospital, let's go. Must be some brain we're after. Well, he's no chimpanzee, Dr. Mondoro. I can tell you that, but for security precautions, I don't think that you or your wife should be burdened with any more. He's 51, Caucasian, period. Well, I guess I can know about the recipient, though. That you could. We haven't found him yet. What? Mr. Slaughter had three volunteers lined up from the Veterans Hospital, terminal cases. Oh, no, that wouldn't be any good. They wouldn't... I explained that, Hiller. There's a replacement volunteer flying here right now from Pennsylvania. Perfect help. Well, it's not just health. Other factors with the recipient have to be right. They will be. We've only got to see that they are. Fifteen years. I have a small confession to make, Mr. Slaughter. I would have done it for nothing. They're ready to begin. They just certified him dead. Right here, Mr. Dorsey. You can let us off. Sorry, I go where baby goes. Slaughter's orders. <laughs> I'm talking about a brain like it was a person. Eh? But you say his memory's alive in there. Is that the idea? Yeah, well, the ribonucleic acids, or RNA, which is the sum chemical total of this man's life, are still alive. And they will be for another 12 hours. In that time, we have to extract the RNA from this otherwise lifeless brain and inject it into somebody else. Oh. This is your idea of a recipient for something as fantastically complicated as all this? An inmate of a federal penitentiary? The man is a bona fide volunteer. And this is a report of his physical condition. It's A1. I'm sorry. It's a mistake. I signed a paper. Notarized. The warden's secretary. She's a notary public. You're lucky. You don't know what you'll be getting into. Mister, I know what I want to get out of. The rest of my sentence. Ninety-nine years to life. Uh, look, Dr. Kramer, we're down to the nitty-gritty. We have got to gamble. You have made that a very expensive one for us. Since save your money, it couldn't possibly work. I've already spent 17 years in that stinking pen. The man be used has to be healthy emotionally, as well as physically. How could he be after 17 years? We made a deal! Now, there's no time left. You know what's involved. We've got to go ahead. They will. You have my word. 
I see, without a volunteer. You'll have one. Fifteen years. It's not unusual for a scientist to be his own first subject. It's insane. You're much too valuable. Just do your job. Besides, you yourself helped me work out the risk projections for a human. You know they are acceptable. And you will end up actually by getting a bargain, not a neurotic, low normal prisoner, but the one person in the whole world most totally qualified to monitor and control this transfer, to make certain that it works, which it will, Mr. Slot, I assure you. It will. You're considering offering yourself in my stead, Mr. Slaughter? Or perhaps your colleague wants to volunteer? Mm -hmm. It distresses you, this development, because it's not covered in the manual. Nonetheless, you will let me do it because you have no choice. And besides, Mr. Slaughter, admit it, you don't really give a damn about the possible risk to my brain, my future work. What's in here? is all that counts to you. Next time, next crisis, you will go buy another brain. And you, Hillel, better start keeping up with the notes. You will have to take that job over. Hillel, the notes. Homogenized brain tissue is now... Dr. Kramer. The notes, Hillel. Homogenized brain tissue is now being extracted at 20,000 RPM. A simple solution of sodium chloride in equal parts. Mm. I saved you some blocks. Mm, it wasn't easy, but in the end, love triumphed over gluttony. Mm. Well, I'm not too hungry tonight. Well, everything went all right, didn't it? Hmm. You go. Me. I'm still sticking with the guy's memory there. Yeah, that's what I came to check. Is it okay? Well, I think so. Would you like some coffee? Oh, I'd love some. <sighs> it's in there. You just plug it in and hope for the best. There's some instant on the tray.
I take mine black. It's now 5.16 a.m. And I, Dr. Mondor, am about to inject the RNA into my left arm. I'm doing this because it's unthinkable to me that Dr. Kramer should sacrifice himself this way. Due to the pressure of time, I shall inject a full amount intravenously of the available RNA. 1,235 milligrams. Solution. Moving into the cavity of the chest muscles, as with our other test animals. Ah. Ah. The spasms in the diaphragm are now stopped. finally got your coffee. I sleep long? It's four o'clock of the second day. How am I doing? So far, no serious variances with the projections for a human. The second day? Mm-hmm. Is Karen okay? Yes, waiting to take you home. You're very angry. You had no right. Dr. Kramer, you had no right. Your brain's one of the world's great natural resources. The risk factors were too imponderable. As a scientist, I couldn't permit it. You couldn't permit it. Regardless of how it happened, you are into this thing. Now let's try to have a success. Oh, no, trying is not good enough. What you injected yourself with, Dr. Mondoro, so heroically, is the property of the United States government, so handle with care. You can sit up now. As soon as you get home, Try to give us the raw material, your thoughts, your impulses, your sensations. Tell Mrs. Mondoro she can come in now. Dr. Kramer, it's gonna work. While I was unconscious, I was dreaming. Some of the sensations are with me now. What was the dream? I was in trouble someplace. I was being taken somewhere. Where did you seem to be? Well, I thought it was in, in Europe. I was in an air... No, I'm not sure. It seemed to be me in those dreams, and yet it wasn't. 
It was another man. What kind of man? A sad one. If you didn't look so lousy, I would slug you. Yeah, well, you look all right. Hey, you know what? We're gonna go home. You and me and that other guy's memory. You know, I managed to sneak in some fresh things for you yesterday. having a dream. There was a, there was a ring. It almost feels as if it's still there. I better put down some notes while it's still fresh. Keep Slaughter happy. Did you hurt your foot? No. Then why are you limping? Quiet, couldn't you see that? I'm sorry. It's just that whatever it is they want, slaughter the government, it's inside me now. I gotta I gotta force it to the surface. However and whenever I can. And not for any banana either. Kramer. He's your banana. Well, he'll never forgive me, but I had to do it. I had to. There's a connection between the dreams I've been having and, and certain flashes and images of memory that are no part of my life, of me. Hello, Mondoro. I was just able, by concentrating, to, to extend an episode of a dream I was having where I was limping down a corridor somewhere and being taken someplace that was, that was evil. And hostile. The limp, the limp is a part of me. Whoever he was, he limped, he was sad, and he was desperate. What are your thoughts at this moment? Right now? Yeah. Just where I am. Where are you? You mean here? Yeah. The limp? The same? Yeah, it, it comes and goes. The sensation of depression? Yeah, also the same. Particularly when uh, one of the images breaks through to me. It just seems that way now. Have you had one of these images today so far? No, <laughs> not today. I guess that's enough for this session, huh? Unless there's something else you'd care to go into. I must say, you're being more patient about this than I thought you would be. Oh, I'm a realist, Dr. Mondoro. I can see that you have to do this your own way. You do feel that sooner or later we're going to get what we want. Sooner or later. Well, it's another day tomorrow. Right? <laughs> Poor little jerk. Sir? Well, sir, since you slept through our beautiful dinner, wouldn't you like to have at least some fruit? The oranges are from Haifa. Uh, no, thank you. 
Excuse me, please. Where are we? Just 50 minutes away. Hello, Mondoro, New York, London, Copenhagen, Berlin. Berlin, Prague, Zurich. You are feeling better now. I took the liberty of forbidding the stewardess to wake you for the meal. <laughs> I could see you needed dressed after what happened back at London. London? After we had landed from America, we were changing planes. You became uh, indisposed. <laughs> it was I who helped you board. You remember? Of course. Yes, of course. I. Well, I... Well, thank you, if I, if I, if I didn't. Not at all. May I? Renner. Willy Renner. Hauser. Karl Helmut Hauser. A pleasure. What is it? You feel ill again? No, I feel kind of cramped. Excuse me, I... Welcome to Copenhagen, sir. Your first time? Yes. I, I, I think so. Where do you change money around here? It's at the foot of the stairs on the right. Come on, girls. March now. to help you, my friend. It so happens I have some Danish currency from my last trip. These little functionaries, they are all the same. Which isn't necessarily true of a person's handwriting if he is tired. You can pay me when you just get around to it. Huh? <laughs> you have my card? Yes. Yeah? Thank you. Listen, you've got to leave me alone. I beg your pardon, my friend. Tell Slaughter he mustn't interfere. I don't know why I came to Copenhagen, but there's a compulsion pulling me along. Hauser's compulsion. You understand the name you tricked me into saying on the plane? Karl Helmut Hauser. You tell him there's a, a pattern to the things I must do. I don't know the pattern yet, but I can feel it. Listen, you tell him I couldn't, I couldn't stop now if I wanted to. I think you're delirious, my friend.
sir. Every German scientist who was born in the last hundred years is listed here. You know how far the Germans are. especially electromagnetism, affiliated with Wehrmacht Science Research Bureau until arrested in Copenhagen, Denmark in 1944. On a treason charge by the Gestapo, imprisoned but believed liberated by the Russians, reported alive and working in Russia but unconfirmed. Arrested in Copenhagen, Denmark in 1944. Waiting for someone, uh, vodka. Did I order that? Yes, sir. Do you want something else? Mm, uh, yeah, um, coffee. Yes. Dr. Kramer, it's all happening very fast. But there's some facts you should know, certain clinical developments. For instance, I'm discovering right now that there are certain things I don't want to tell you. I have a, a definite feeling of hostility towards you. Hauser was, was mentally unbalanced. Perhaps that's why I feel hostile. I, I know he wasn't just depressed. He was deeply disturbed and an em, 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 emotionally tormented man. He had been for years. He was possibly psychotic. The Russians made it worse by forcing him to drink vodka, and he soon developed a need for it. And night after night, the drinking, all those years ago in Russia, it... The important thing is that all that started here on the street in Copenhagen, where I am now. And there was... Yeah. 
What do you want? I want what you took from me. How do you know my name? You betrayed him. And in betraying him, you ruined his life. Hauser. Karl Helmut Hauser. I don't know any Hauser. Excuse me. He gave you that ring. In gratitude and deep appreciation, he gave you his ring. You knew Anna and Hauser in Berlin before the war. In 1944, he looked you up when he came here with a Wehrmacht science team. Taxi! What does Sasha have in Kong? Uh, yes, if you please, Paul. Paul's my brother. I am Boo. I am May. Hauser confided in you that he had begun to realize that Hitler and the High Command could never win the war. Mm, not that he was a traitor. He never was a traitor. Never. Who are you? He was worried. Purges were beginning among those expressing the slightest doubt. He was terrified that if he was caught of what would happen to Anna, his wife, or Dieter, his child. What is all this to you? Hauser had 20,000 marks. It was all arranged. He was to come to your street at night, 8.30 sharp. He'd knock on the door and you would let him in. It would never do for your people to know that you are friendly with a German. But you betrayed him. No, no. Yes, no, no. yes, you betrayed him. You turned him into the Gestapo that very same night. Something else, things they... Yes, something happened, I can't remember. They, they did. The money. That's what I'm here for. Hauser's money to give to Anna and Dieter. All right, I'll give it to you. Dad, Here's a taxi. We'll go to my bank. Why did you betray him? Tell me, why, why did you be betray him? So long ago, who can remember? We can. Hauser and I. Taxi! A taxi! Give me back the ring. I can't. It won't come out. Do you understand what can happen when your country is occupied? First you betray yourself by living on and on. And after you have betrayed yourself, do you think it's so hard to, to betray anyone else? you find me. I never lost you. I've got to get to Berlin. i got to get to Berlin. Berlin. That's where Anna is, I tell you. I'm telling you, it's out of the question. Listen, I don't want to talk to you. Well, you're going to. Slaughter's in Washington. I'm in charge. And, baby, I'm not about to let you blow this one on me. Please, get him out of here. You cut the ground from under me when you took off on your own. You know now that the stuff you injected into yourself, which you got by pulling that cute little fast one on me, came from the brain of a Dr. Carl Hauser. You also know he's a physicist. And he was specializing in electromagnetism. I don't want to talk about that right now. <laughs> Now, baby, stop fooling with me. How much can you tell us about the work Hauser was doing? We can't function this way. All right, we have a transfer, that's clear. But there must be controls. You should have thought of that before you started holding things back. It wasn't me, that was Hauser. It was you. And only you when you started all this. When you gave yourself that injection. I did that to help. Help who? Me? Or yourself? You wanted an importance for yourself far beyond your due. Don't you dare talk to me about control conditions. You jeopardized my controls, my plans, 15 years of them. You are no longer my colleague, but the subject. To be given help, but no trust.
how Hauser was shot, defecting to us. Well, how much can you tell us about the work he was doing in Russia? Now, come on, give. I don't get any thoughts about his work, only his wife, Anna. All that matters is to see her and give her the money. Well, think, remember. It will not do any good, don't you understand that, Shibilov? What did I call you? A dirty name. Now you can see I wouldn't let you stop me getting him on that plane. I didn't think it'd hurt to trigger Hauser's memory. The name you just called me, Shepilov, that was the man that was in charge of Hauser in Russia. Now, if you know that, you know more. Yes, but I must get to Berlin. That's what I know most Come of all. Come on, baby. Berlin is rough. East side, west side, all around yeah, the but town. But she's there, and Dieter's there, too. I must begin with them. And then... Then perhaps I can concentrate on your Shepilov. What do you think? He's partly playing a game with us. Come, come, you never were crafty. Ambitious, yes. Duplicitous, no. But you can't turn me around now, Doctor. Nobody can. Not even you. All right. Sweetie baby, arrange transportation to Berlin. Schnell! Sir? Yes. Yes, we're ready on this end. Put it through. Hello? Guess who? Kara? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I really don't remember what happened. Well, for one thing, your rare steak got a little well done waiting for you. And between us, the baby and I managed to finish off about three pounds of potato knishes. Yes. It's all right, sweetheart, I understand. You feeling all right? It's kind of complicated. You, you see, I, see if I'm, I... I know I'm not really making much sense, but... See, it's because I'm... I'm so... So tired. Hello. Hello, what well, listen? By the way, be sure to confirm your flights when you get to Berlin. Of course, Zurich is no problem, but Prague is complicated. Thank you. That's twice I've forgotten that Zurich and Prague are on the ticket I bought. There's something else. Hauser was trying to forget something. Something that was done to him, something terrible. And I get a resistance to the memory. Whatever it was is buried deep in his subconscious. I suppose you know all about it. Maybe. I need a drink. It's all right. Sweetie baby will get it for you. What do you want? A double vodka. That surprise you? <laughs> Not even a little. Sweetie baby. It involves Anna, his wife, doesn't it? Non, je fais sûrement erreur. Celle que je cherche depuis quelque temps a, a été mariée au docteur Karl Hauser. Eh bien, je l'ai été. Alors vous êtes. What have they done to you? Why? What do you want? I have something for you. May I come in?
He wanted you to have it. You have to take it. You're mad. Get out of here. Put his life in danger. Safeguard this money for you. He was betrayed. Almost killed. Russians would never kill a mind they have a use for. Russians? I'm talking about the Nazis. Betrayed both of you. Unspeakable things happened to Karl Hauser. And then he was taken to Russia. And what was done to him changed him. He changed. And he, he couldn't get in touch with you. And even if he could get in touch with you, he wouldn't. Because what was the use? Anna, what was the use? Who are you? My name is Hillel Mondoro. I'm the last person to know your husband. Jew? Yes. He worked so hard. There was no need. Here, please, take it. Take it for his sake. He never stopped loving you. He, he never forgot you. Well, I've forgotten him. The day they arrested him as a traitor. That day, I've forgotten him. But he, he wasn't a traitor. That was Van Kungen's lie. All your husband wanted was a, a free Germany, a decent Germany. Free Germany? A decent Germany? You know, you talk like Dieter over there on the other side of the wall. Dieter is in East Berlin. He calls me a Nazi, as if that was a disgraceful thing. And he's nothing but a communist. A dirty communist actor at that cesspool, the Bertolt Brecht Theater. Look him up. Why don't you? It's to have a lot in common. Okay, anything you say, baby. Let's go. The, the Berthold Brecht Theater in East Berlin. Dieter's an actor. <laughs> Dieter acting. Little Dieter. Tempelhof Airport. What do you mean, Tempelhof? I have to see Dieter. You tell him I must do this. To protect our interest. In East Berlin? Just for an hour. To give him the money. In an hour in broad daylight. Broad daylight? Are you kidding? There are 50,000 Asians running around loose on both sides of that wall. Yes. At least a third of them are double agents, huh? for you, sweetie baby. Agents, double agents. Los Fen!
Nixon stood when he visited Free Berlin. For some reason, he didn't go across over there to the other side. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you know something they don't know. Well, if you turn around, uh, this bridge here, it connected Berlin at one time. Now it's the border. And if you look over there, the honor of talking to Dr. Kramer for a few minutes. In case this shot hasn't entirely worn off, they seem to have been kidnapped. So I, I have to get to the Berthold Brecht Theater. Well, you certainly shall, Dr. Mondoro, if that's what you want. So I would say this is not exactly like a kidnapping in one of your American movies. I have to see Dita. Fascinating. Naturally, not an empirical proof. But there is a certain feeling in those old bones of mine that your method has really worked. Fascinating. Brenner, yes. Brenner, I see the car downstairs. You have the keys. You, you're going to take me to the theater. Huh? You will in just a minute. You know, Dr. Mondoro, my own approach to RNA research was from the opposite direction. I tried to erase memories by applying enzyme ribonucleus, which, of course, breaks down the RNA in memory banks. Ah. There's someone who would like to meet you. Comrade Shepilov, may I present Dr. Hillel Mondoro. Where's your vodka bottle now, Shepilov? And all the other ways to make a man swallow his soul? Empirical proof, Dr. Kramer. I salute you. Tell you something, Dr. Mondoro. I offer no apologies for forcing Karl Hauser to use his fine brain. In today's world to look for a better anti-nuclear missile device, that's what it was, but you know, of course. It's a tragically necessary thing. What did you say? Please. I have to see Dita. I understand. Oh. Because of my rather dramatic entrance. We have not had a chance to chat. I will accord you your full Nobel Prize honors and respect when you both get back. Back from there? The theater, of course. Uh, Renner will take you to look for your son. <laughs> it's also changed. Over there on that corner is the church where we were married. Anna was so lovely then. She called me Yid. Why? Do you know what? It's a cocktail hour. A drink, gentlemen? Nobody wants a drink, Renner. I know you can understand me. But you can see what they're up to. They're trying to accelerate everything. To force you to totally expose our secret much too early in the trance. But you know how difficult it is for the recipient to accommodate the alien RNA. Should we have a little schnapps? Larsen's it does. It was Hauser they made her drunk, not you. It's Hauser they're trying to make you feel like, think like, much too soon. You mustn't let that happen. It will destroy this magnificent start. Chances are we will never get out. Not getting out, being stuck here, that's not your style, is it, Kramer? You are one of those who got out of Berlin in the early days, right? Early to America to save your skin. You didn't care enough about this country to stay here and fight for it a really hard way under Hitler. And Karen, your wife, Karen. Karen? You will never see her again. Karen. Now, wait a minute. She telephoned. When was that? Was that yesterday in, in Copenhagen? She was crying. Here shortly. 
I first sent word by the stage manager. Are you good friends? Do you know him well? We are engaged to be married. Yes. We have already our papers. It is simply a question of obtaining a flat. Rents are so prohibitive. It's a compliment of Arena, please. Tell me, is Dieter a good actor? Is he considered popular? He only understands now, but all the major roles in the repertoire. All of them? Well, not officially. But in his dressing room, before the mirror, if he thinks nobody's looking. Yes, I'm not surprised Dieter is an actor. As a child, he was always performing. He had a very, a very vivid imagination. He used to conjure up the most extraordinary. What's the matter? Is, is something wrong? How is it you know so much of Dieter? I am a, I'm a very good friend of his father. But how could you be? Not exactly the resemblance I'd remembered, but... It's been 19 years, hasn't it? The message said you had something for me. Something of value. Yes. Some money. 20,000 marks. What's the game? Game? The police have an odor that even expensive cologne can't hide. Police? Oh, no. no, it's me they're watching, not you. And they indulge me because it suits their fancy. I'm to believe that? The money is yours, from your father. I am only doing what he was trying to do when he died. Did his father dead? He was gunned down by the Russians. But for two days he lived. He was paralyzed, but he couldn't speak, but he could think. And for those two days, you were constantly in his mind. How could you possibly know that? Look, take this. You can use it to find somewhere to live, to get married. Did you declare that at the border? Put it away. Don't you know we could all go to a labor camp for 20 years being caught with undeclared West German Max? I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't realize it. We'll have to separate. To meet somewhere later. Katinka. What? Katinka, you remember? Yes, you remember Katinka. She used to follow you around like a little puppy. But one day, Katinka disappeared, and you were inconsolable. And then Willie, the boy next door. You remember Willie? He told you that Katinka, your little white cat, had been ground up for sausage meat. And from that day on, your mother and I could never make you touch sausage again. But you don't remember that, do you? Who are you? Where is Dieter? He's dead. Dieter's dead. Last night, he was helping a friend go over the wall. Only helping. Last night? And tonight, you and me. You knew, you knew when we brought me here. Lower your voice. People are staring. Believe me, our most regrettable accidents about there. I can assure you, we were no way involved. You were involved in bringing him here. After what happened in West Berlin, West House's widow, Shebelo failed it best. You should be spared another such disappointment. The shock, he said, could have a desired side effect. As for your other advantages in having a counterfeit Dieter, a father might just confide in his son certain information. You would not yield up to others. I think we had better leave now. We attract too much attention. Stimmt hier etwas nicht. Alles in Ordnung. Ich erkläre es euch draußen. Komm. Of 
as rescue jobs go, this has been lucky so far. With more luck, we are three hours in the clear. I telephoned your Russian friends earlier, as if I was Renner's driver that day. You insisted on seeing the show. We'll dump these along the way. Dieter's dead. We are going away from West Berlin. Washington advised us not to get back that way. The pictures have already been posted with all the border guards. Slaughter instructed us to cross into Czechoslovakia. He figured the East Germans wouldn't expect us to be going from one communist country to another. It is right you'll have breakfast in Prague. Prague? That was on my ticket. You're both medical doctors, kidney specialists, because there happens to be a kidney symposium going on right now in Prague. Transit to the CSSR, all of us. Out of the car. Foreign passports must be certified in room E. There's nothing irregular about all this, just so long as a phone call doesn't come in from Berlin. Or hasn't already. They are in order. Do you have any currency of this Republic on you? It's forbidden to take it out. Uh, no. You have something there? No, he hasn't. Can't he talk? I, I can talk. I... You are nervous. Nothing. When we stopped to get rid of those Vopo uniforms, that's when we threw away the money, too. You don't remember that? I remember Dieter, who is dead, and Anna, who might as well be. I did nothing by coming here to Germany. Correction. You survived. At least until now you have. The phone could be nothing. I like your thinking. I wish you a long life. What does the symbol F usually stand for? Why do you ask? Well, there was a blackboard in Russia. There was a mathematical formula being worked on it. But, but there wasn't enough on, written on the blackboard to be of any use to them. You see, his work wasn't that far advanced. Dr. Kramer, I myself took no math past my sophomore year at Columbia, yet I seem to be advancing how's his work. What does F usually stand for? Force, free energy, focal length, capacitance, almost everything. Well, in this formula, F is expressed as a second-order partial differential with a peculiar symmetrical exponential function below zero. Do you know what you are saying, this is so? Something we only wondered about. Hiller, you may be proving that contained knowledge actually continues constructive work in the new brain, even with something as special as higher mathematics. I can still see it. There's more, there's much more of that blackboard formula in Russia. I'm tired. I want to stop. I, I can't stop my mind from working. Unfortunately, you're not the only one working right now.
do, don't talk about that formula. Don't try to write it down. I have the honor to welcome you to free Czechoslovakia and to personally escort you into Prague, the most beautiful baroque city in the world. Very soon we'll be in our famous Wenzel Square. The square with the National Museum at the end. You have been to Prague before then? No, it uh, was those newsreels during your trouble with the Russians. Oh, yes. Those ridiculous American newsreels. Just look, please. Look at the people. Nice, happy people. No fighting, no Russian tanks. And here we are, Prague's finest, the Ambassador Hotel. Take a look. Important doctors from all over the world. But not one of them is being beaten or brainwashed. That is where you gentlemen would be if you'd been telling the truth in your transit papers from East Germany. government for very important guests. Copenhagen, being thrown down the steps of the Gestapo cellar there, where the foot was broken. And nobody helped, just as nobody helped here in Prague. Now, wait a minute. You brought me here on purpose to make me feel all these things again, didn't you? Hitler. The man who had this suite was investigating separately. Hitler, you trusted him. No, no, I'm making it all up. I remember nothing. There's nothing to remember. Why should I remember? <laughs> My name is Hilo Mondoro. What is this place to me? Just something to calm you. A great Kramer, huh? No sweat. You'll just wait until it pushes through into my consciousness. I'm very tired. Lie down, then. Take him away. Verstehen Sie? Bring him to one of the rooms down the hall. Listen, he needs to be watched. He will be.
is no reason not to lie down. Here is a pad if you want to write to your wife. during the night? I did. Would you mind telling us what it means? I don't know. I think you do. You know, we don't have to be so grim about this. It's a great moment in science, really. And after all, isn't that what you've striven for? Again, my congratulations. You have absolutely no right to detain us this way. The question is, how do we get back House's memory, which belongs to us, if we let your colleague go? And you do seem to have some control over him, though clearly it is fading. And thirsty. It is an interesting philosophical question, Dr. Kramer. What is a man? His mind or his body? The mind we are talking about clearly is not this gentleman's, though the body is. The mind is Hauser's which you have no right to keep, which you will not keep. You know, you're worried about losing Carl House's mind. It certainly shows that way. You dragged me here into this very room where I... Well, you what? You really can't fight House's remembrance of what happened here any more than you can submerge the rest. Though I confess to you, I'm nervous, and we are trying to accelerate the process, because no one can predict how long the RNA and you Hauser's RNA, stolen from us, will survive. Hauser was going to give us an intercontinental defense system years in advance of anything America has. We must have this, and I assure you we will have it. It won't work, Shepilov. Hauser's, Hauser got away from you. But you did. And you have just committed any number of major crimes against the people of Czechoslovakia. Pavel Kuchera. Not that I presume to say what the law is in your country. Uh, you both entered this country with false passports. You consorted with known agents of a foreign power. You just physically attacked me, an official of this free country. On these matters alone, we could put you in prison for 20 years. That is your choice. Either both of you will leave for Moscow with us tonight voluntarily, our comrade Kuchera does his legal duty. Did you say 20 years, comrade Kuchera? You will pardon an outsider from saying this, but I would guess that these crimes are punishable by death. Of course. It is my own policy to begin softly. Well, begin then, comrade. Professor Korovyev and I will be back in 30 minutes. Think it over. Moscow, the university, as Professor Korovyev's honored guests, or here, as his guests. I want another drink. But of course. Were you under the direct orders of the CIA? I demand to see a representative of the United States government. What was the real reason you came to Czechoslovakia? Has the CIA made contact with dissident elements here? I'm a scientist. I don't make contact with dissident elements or anything else. 
I repeat again, I demand to see someone from the United States mission. Homogenized brain tissue is now being extracted. Dr. Kramer, Dr. Kramer. Well, Kramer's been dead. Made in Czechoslovakia, all right? We better go tell our cousin Kuchera. got lost. This one needs air. Wait a minute. This fellow like you, also a specialist in kidneys. says goodbye to you and to me. We're really going to Zurich? Mr. Slaughter decided that. He said it was part of your original ticket. You might as well keep playing out the string. Your Mr. Slaughter doesn't give up. Don't knock it, friend. And he's your Mr. Slaughter, too. And his. This is nightmare. It's, it's devouring my brain like some great insatiable worm. And I've done everything he asked. I've seen, I see Anna and Dita. And for what? It was too late. It was almost, almost too late. And, and now, I can't. I just, I just can't. Can't do what, love? Kill a man. Oh, hello. No. It was, it was SS General Gessler. He was supposed to have been killed in the last battle in Berlin, but he wasn't. That's what I heard in Russia. That's why I tried to escape to the West. Not you, Hillel. Hauser. I heard that he was here in Zurich. This time, there won't be any mistake. I'll make sure of that. You couldn't, Hillel. It's not in you. You're not like that. No, but he deserves to die. Why? Why does he deserve to die? Because it was Gessler and people like him who shoveled your people into the ovens there. Does that answer satisfy you? My people? Understand, I'm not a Nazi. And I never was a racist. And this business of Aryan supremacy is... Well, scientifically viewed, and genetically speaking, absolute nonsense. Yes. I'm Jewish. So is my husband. Oh, Hillel. 
Hillel Feel. Our child, Hillel. Yours and mine. Growing right here inside me. Feel, Hillel. Feel. <laughs> You're my husband, and I didn't come all the way to Zurich just to... Hello? Please hold me. Cover yourself, woman. You're no shame. It hurts! You see, there was no anesthetic. They were rounding up the suspects in the assassination plot and tracking them to Gester's hotel suite in Prague. It was suite 333. You know what happened there that night, do you? To Carl Hauser. There was no anesthetic. I can feel the pain. Not you, Hillel. Hauser. Hauser. Ah! How could a man come back to his wife, his, his young wife, when he was no longer a man? What do you want? I want you to stand up. Don't bother. I already have it. Stand up. Gessler. My name is Guzman. Andreas Guzman. I was born in Cuba. So of German parents. Your name is Gessler. SS General yeah. Gessler. I'm Hauser. Who? Karl Helmut Hauser. Ich bin eines ihrer Opfer in Prague, 1944. You mutilated me. You personally. You were hardly alive in 1944. Last month I heard you were here in Zurich. One of the other Germans working in Russia told me, and he told me the name you were using, and also the bank accounts. These are fetten Geheimkonten in der Schweiz. That's when I decided to go over to the Americans. First to regain my strength, and then here after you. You're ill, young man. Fortunately, Zurich has fine doctors. Gessler, du Metzger. Ich weiß, ich bin am Ende. Where would I go? To Israel. You look like a Jew. <laughs> Daughters and daughters, Hillel. You have to be followed, but you move too fast. Hillel, can you hear me? Yeah. Hillel. I'm 
sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, too. Tell Karen. Tell her. Yes. <laughs> 